good afternoon, my beautiful people. A lot of y'all want to know how my experience was on the uh, fishing vessel, clamming vessel, whatever. Let me start off by saying it was definitely one of the most challenging things that I have ever experienced in my life. Um, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know what kind of boat I was getting on. I didn't know how long I was leaving for, what the crew looked like, or how it was going to be or anything like that. I just simply got on the boat, met everybody, when I got on the boat, <clears throat> we got straight to work from there. I automatically started climbing up on top of shit, fixing everything, hoping to do, getting to know, getting acquainted with uh, with uh, one of the crew members. And we eventually set sail, you know what I mean? It was really cool, you know what I mean? Um, it wasn't bad at all. And then it really starts to hit you like the, like once you start breaking night, like until the next day, like I was soaked, I was wet, I was cold, you're working hard. The dock is, where well, the deck is, is super wet. Stay troopers, hold on a second. The dock was super wet. And it was cold, the boat is rocking, you're trying to keep your balance. And at the same time, you're bending over, trying to separate the clams from uh, all the empty shells and from other marine life that get caught up in the dredge trap. You don't set bait or anything like that for clams. You just drag the dredge on the bottom of the ocean floor and there's this big hose that shoots down and shoots the water up from the sand and helps to, to release the clams that are burrowed down inside the ocean floor. The problem with that is is that other creatures get caught up inside that uh that trap and by far out of everything that I experienced not just on that boat but in life in general and I mean I've had to do a lot of things in life where I had to muster up a lot of courage to complete whatever task was at hand like I've been in gang wars and gang fights and brawls from when I was 14 fighting with grown ass men you know what I mean doing uh doing little bids in the county jail going to war of course doing um underground construction laying pipe doing water main soil main where I have to actually step in feces and working hard laying 300 feet of pipe a day minimum with the walls caving in around you in the Jersey Shore because the, the ground water is like it's, it's right there as soon as you begin to dig you know it was pretty treacherous but nothing prepared me for the marine life that I had to endure while working on that boat there were stingrays, horseshoe crabs, um, a certain breed of fish called stargazers, one word, and I suggest that you Google it and look it up. It is the most terrifying, horrifying, petrifying creatures that you will ever see in your life. And that creature along with every other one that I have to see, some of them I didn't even know the name of, but the stingray, the horseshoe crab, some other fish I didn't know what it was, and the stargazer petrified me. And it was something that I had no idea about or didn't take into consideration before I had gotten up on that boat. So like I stated before, I signed up for the danger of it all. I signed up for the pain. I knew it was gonna suck. I, I, you know what I mean? It's not for me. If you don't like, if you're scared of heights, if you're scared of being out in the ocean where you don't know what, where you are, what time of day it is, any of that. Like me, I knew what kind of what time of day it was for the most part and what direction I what direction I was facing because I'm really good with astronomy so I could tell by where the sun was and where the stars was where where I was. You know what I mean? Or which direction I was facing and what time of day it was. But I had no idea where where I was exactly <clears throat> or what was going on in the real world. But if you're afraid of heights, weather and the motion of the boat and all that stuff is not for you. And especially if you're not used to like wildlife like me. Like, at the end of the day, I'm a I'm a kid from Newark, New Jersey, and uh, I wasn't prepared for you know having to pick up stingrays, uh, horseshoe crab, and these stargazer fish that literally scared the shit out of me. And 
like I said, like I've been through all kinds of crazy ass shit in life where I really had to toughen up and everything. But it took out of everything in life. I, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been in a war where I have to see, you know what I mean, pick up dead children and seeing toddlers carrying dead infants with their faces burned off and the smell of burning skin. And, and you know, my whole block full of people just blown up with body parts all over the fucking place and everything. And like I said, I've had to, you know, get into some crazy brawls and things like that. You know, I've done a lot of crazy things where I really had to muster up courage to, to endure. But nothing in my life prepared me for having to pick up a stingray or a horseshoe crab or anything. Like last time I heard of a stingray, it killed the Australian dude. You know what I mean? And just the way that they feel and the way that they look and just the little eyes and everything about it, the way you feel, it's just, oh my God, it's the most craziest creepiest thing ever and I wasn't prepared for that and at first you know what I mean I would just I would pick up a shovel and try to scoop it off but eventually I knew that wasn't going to work for too long and I couldn't let the guys on the boat see me bitch up I couldn't know let, couldn't let them know that all the bitch that was ever inside of me was coming out of me at that moment like I'm a pretty tough and confident dude I would say for the most part but that shit brought the bitch out of me The biggest bitch out of me Like if you woke up in the middle of the night And you was like what the fuck was that Like you heard somebody screaming Nah and just went back to sleep That was me screaming from the depths And the bowels of my soul on the inside I couldn't let them scream on the outside Because I couldn't like I had too much pride And I couldn't let them do see me like Screaming but I mean And it wasn't just like ah Like it was a uh, like, I mean, like the most highest pitches, bitches scream that you can ever hear come from a man. And I'm sure that it echo not only throughout the planet, but throughout the whole universe, how loud my inside was screaming when I saw some of these uh, marine animals that we had to pick up off the conveyor belt and throw back into the ocean. Like it was, that, that really out of everything that I've ever done in my life, like, that was the most challenging thing I've ever had to do and the biggest fear I ever had to conquer. Like, I don't even remember anything even being, having fear of anything ever in my life. Like, I'm known for being fearless, you know what I mean? Lose a win, you know what I mean? I'm always up for the challenge, but that was by far the most personal challenge for me. Like, like I said, out of all the things I experienced in life, having to pick up those stingray and those stargazer fish, those big, ugly, squirmy fish was the most challenging thing that I had to do in my life. And it brought all the bitch out of me and it brought all the men out of me as well because I had to dig deep down, dig deep down inside and really, you know what I mean, grab myself by the balls, or oh, excuse my language, you know what I mean, grab my cojones and really like, like, all right, like I can't let this dude see me do that. And uh, I ended up confessing to one of the dudes who I was I worked with, you know, thank God he was there because I don't think I would have made it without, you know what I mean, his encouragement. We ended up having, I ended up finding out we had the same birthday. So we have pretty similar personality traits. Um, God damn, let me stay true because they got out of here. And uh, it, was, it was a really, really, really crazy experience. Um, aside from you not sleeping and it being cold and you being soaking wet, it was just, it was just really, really, really crazy. Like, and the dude told me like, yo, like three out of a hundred people make it through this and keep on doing it. Only 65% make it through the first trip and even less make it through being on a conveyor belt. And you was on a conveyor belt by yourself the last two times. And most I seen dudes Freak the fuck out on there. And you handled that quite well. He gave me a pound and was like, bro, I applaud you. Congratulations. Like, and I told him how I ended up confessing to him like how much it took for me to to really dig down deep down inside of me and pick up those marine animals and toss them back into the ocean. Like it really took a lot out of me. Like and I'm really glad that I conquered that fear because I mean when you see like a horseshoe crab in the bottom of it, it is like a big old roach in it. I mean, it was just like the eyes on those stargazer fish and the teeth. It was just like, I've, I've, I've never, like, 
always, you know what I mean, have like this stereotypical view of how fish look in the ocean and stuff like that. And I just have seen, and I experienced and seen some marine life that I never knew existed. And it really kind of have me thinking about ever going to the beach again or ever getting inside the border ever again. Because if I was to see one of those things touch my body, I would have a goddamn heart attack. Like it was, I mean, it was the most petrifying thing ever. It was, it was terrible. But other, other than that, like, you know what I mean? It, it sucked really bad. I don't, it's definitely not for the faint of hearts. It was one of the most treacherous things for anyone to endure. Like I said, it's multiple things on top of one. Like you don't know where you are. It's cold as hell. You're wet. The boat is moving. You can't sleep. And when you try to sleep in your little bunk, you got this little ass bunk that's like a little small space. So your personal space is really, really small. And the boat is rocking and so much noise from all the different machines and the engine and everything like that. So it was very hard to sleep. I had, I ate a few chicken nuggets sparingly throughout the whole time. And that kept me going besides a monster and a monster energy drink and a Red Bull. We got ran down on by the Coast Guard, which is very rare experience and which hasn't been done since the Wu flu hit COVID-19 for those who don't know what the Wu flu is. And at first I'm like, oh man, like, oh, we could probably get away from them. I see this big ass Coast Guard boat out there. I'm like, oh, this big old ship. I'm like, oh shit. You know, the guys are freaking out. Like normally I would be chilling. If it wasn't, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal, but the crew was freaking out. They was like, oh shit, the goddamn Coast Guard's coming. They're boarding us. Throw all this shit off the board. They started throwing shit Whatever they was doing, I don't know. But they started throwing shit over the board. And I'm like, oh man, we got running, man. We good. You know what I mean? We got to worry about this. That ship, that ship is way far away. Lo and behold, these fuckers dropped a smaller boat with a little speed, a little speed boat with a bunch of little fake little hole looking type all American white dudes on it with these high speed helmets and weapons and stuff. And I was like, oh shit, they not playing. And they hauled ass over to our boat in this little boat and they boarded. And they was like doing like all these inspections and raiding and record checking people and shit like that. And it was it was crazy. Like that was a real crazy experience. I'm, I'm, it was unfortunate to have the experience, but it was fortunate to experience because I got to experience something else about being at sea that you know what i mean most people probably wouldn't get to experience so that was a little nuts um what else what else what am i forgetting about like i mean i was i was so happy to get back to shore i don't know how much money i made i know i made a lot, supposedly a lot of money whatever like that but when we had gone back to shore and i was finished like i grabbed my shit so fast i was hurtling me like our boat was ended up in like we dot we tied up our our boat our vessel to to other vessels inside the harbor while they unloaded and we unloaded all our everything that we had captured or whatever and when i say i was hurling from my ship to the next ship with my army size duffel bag with another bag in my hand man that dude was trying to help me man i was hurt about i was man, i was trying to get off that boat so goddamn fast and then when i had got to my car I had a flat tire and everything. I'm like, oh my God, I got a snow leak. I forgot about that. Man, I didn't care. I got in my car, I drove off flat tire and all. Like, I waited so I got away from that damn dock. I pulled over, I took out the little gizmo from my trunk, filled up my tire, and I hauled ass. And it, I hauled ass, and I ran, I got home so fast. I hit a, some dude try to saw my car, with this little fake Mitsubishi slash Audi thing and try to, play with me and all that man i hit 145 miles an hour and that dude so fast i was already in a bad mood and i wanted to get home man i took off and that dude all you saw was his headlights and they was just gone like I, I took off and that dude so fast i was so so tired and so beat and like i had to jump inside one of the, the clam cages because the shoe tray fell inside of it and i had to stick my jump my jump all the way down in there and my whole boots everything got wet my whole body was wet and i had to work through the whole time cold freezing and wet before i had the, the chance to to change my clothes i didn't want to sit there and be crying like oh i'm wet this is not don't let me go change i just sucked up everything that i was going through and and just didn't complain it was some times where i was just like what the hell did i get myself into and then it was times where you know what i mean i had a long talk with myself and i was like bro you being a bitch right now really need to suck it up and, and and deal with it and shit man you're not quitting there's no there's no other option you know what i mean 
you gotta you gotta stick this shit through. And you know, at first I was like, no, I want to go away for weeks and business is not. And I am so glad that that shit was only for a few days because it's something that I, you you really have to get used to, and like you really have to be on an insane amount of various illicit drugs, not just one, like various illicit drugs. There's a lot of things that happened on the vessel that I won't comment about because I don't want to incriminate anyone that was there. And, you know I mean, certain things, you know, certain codes you just have to abide by. But there was a lot of things on there that I've seen that I don't agree with, but I certainly understand. Because you need to do it to, to survive that. However, it's just not something that, like, I can see myself wanting to have to do to, in order to fulfill that job. Like, it's... I don't want to be on all these different types of substances and stuff like that. Just to be able to be able to stay up and uh, and to try to minimize all the pain that you will go through because there will be pain. You will be hurting in your body and parts of your body that you never knew existed for sure. Like it, like I haven't experienced that much pain since doing underground construction and being in the army doing. You know what I mean? 12 mile, 20 mile, you know what I mean? Road marches while carrying a whole bunch of gear and doing uh, ex uh, military exercises in between or being out in the desert walking and doing, you know, combat patrols where you just be walking and it's out in the desert heat or the freezing cold for the longest. Like, it, it was it was terrible. It was, but it was good. Like, everything, don't get me wrong. Like, everything that was terrible about, terrible about it, I loved. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it was, it was cool. It was everything that I expected. I didn't expect it to be a walk in the park. I knew it was going to be a challenge. I was expecting a challenge. Um, but I was not ready to have to pick up those those gizmos. Those those fish and all that stuff. How are you? How are you? Thank you, you too. know if I could do it steadily like I said because it like you were really like like everyone told me on the crew and everyone that I met you know what I mean you would really have to pick up some really bad habits in order to endure that job like it's either going to chew you up spit you out or chew you up in 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 both like either going to have to embrace it and come one with it or stay away from it at, at, at all costs like it's, it's it's really something that's like it's it's really not for for everybody man and i totally have a a new found respect for people in that industry and the next time you eat a clam or a fish snow crabs or anything just know that the, for you to get that there were some people that went through hell to bring you that to your plate i mean I mean, pure hell. I mean, it's so dangerous. I mean, you're sitting like, you gotta climb up on top of things that's real high and really fix things and well, and the boat is rocking. And if you miss the wrong step, you know what I mean? That's your ass. You falling overboard or you falling down and hitting more things. Like, it's really like, I didn't really get any safety briefing. I didn't see a life jacket or anything. These cops coming crazy. And I didn't see anything that was like about safety, which I really didn't care about because I don't really have time for all of that shit. I wasn't gonna put a life jacket on anyway if the boat was sinking because the last thing I'm gonna do is have don't find me dead looking like a bitch with a life jacket on. Like, oh, with a life jacket on. I, I didn't really care about I'm not I, I didn't I'm glad it wasn't a whole bunch of safety first bullshit because I really don't have tolerance for all of that. Like it is I, 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 the more dangerous and the less dumb things I gotta go through the better. Damn another state trip these people crazy. And then, so, I mean, it, it was, uh, I mean, it's definitely not for the, for the faint of hearts, man. It, it was a really, really, really crazy experience. Like, it'd be times you'd be sitting up just, like, so out of it after not sleeping for so long for you to speed. And then, like, some of the other people on the crew, I don't know what they were doing. I don't want to say nothing. But one of the dudes started tweaking. And I know some of y'all probably thought I was a little crazy when I said, you know what I mean? I purchased me a little shield just in case somebody started acting crazy and I had to get the, mm, 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 you know what I'm saying? But I thought I was gonna have to a couple times, man. I'm sitting there trying to lay down on the bench in the kitchen, trying to stretch my back out, you know what I'm saying? And one of the dudes, I don't know what he was doing, what happened, 
but he started tweaking and talking to himself, doing all this also crazy shit. And I'm just like laying there in my back. I just grabbed my little shiv, put it on my chest, and was just like, just came up with a contingency plan. Like, all right, cool. Like, if this dude try to jump him, he start freaking out or whatever like that. I'm just gonna kick him with both my legs. I got my knife right here. I'm just gonna use my 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 left arm to to push him back and try to grab his throat. Hit him there, mm, 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 go to and start going to work. Start getting surgical on his ass because I'm like I don't know what the hell is going on with this dude. What's wrong with him? Why he doing? Ah, ah. Like I mean, this dude started tweaking. Like I mean, bugging. And I'm like, yeah, what the fuck going on? Like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Fuck around. Surgical on his ass, and so you know what I mean. He already told me, you know what I mean, certain things that he was into. You know what I mean? That he, you know what I mean, he lead a life of violence and all the time he spent in prison and all of that. So who knows what type of PTSD this dude don't have from things he don't experience being at sea and whatever else he went through in life. But I know one thing: I wasn't gonna be his next victim. So, but he was really cool though, man, and he really made the experience a lot better for me. I don't think I could have made it through that experience without his guidance and stuff like that. Even though he left me out there a couple times, but I'm like, yo, like they like they really expecting me to do this and like telling me to go do that and they sitting there yelling over the damn speaker outside on the boat and I can't understand nothing they saying. I can't understand anything at all. They're like, do this, do that, bro. And I'm like, ah, I, don't, I don't know. Turn this off. I don't know what the hell. I'm just turning this shit. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing at first, but I, I finally got it down. I finally mustered up the the courage to start picking up the different marine life and tossing them overboard by myself and with my bare hands. And I can say now that I'm quite confident that I can run the whole deck of that clamming vessel by myself. Like now I know how to really, you know what I mean, work the convey about to where it's like, all right, I'm by myself, I can stop it and I can do it versus just keep continuing going on. Like, I mean, that shit got so crazy at times, like where the, you got, you're trying to separate the clams from the shells and all the other marine life. You're trying to, you got to throw it real fast. You're trying to, you know, throwing it off the, off the conveyor belt and that shit becoming so fast, I ain't able to start stuffing this shit in my mouth, start stuffing it in my pockets. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, shit coming down. I'm like, Shh. I mean, going crazy. And a dude, man, he was like, yo, man, he was like, I seen a lot of dudes break the fuck down when they get in that conveyor belt, but you held your own, bro. You kept, you kept toward it and you didn't, you didn't bitch up, man. Like, he was laughing, like, bro, you, you made it through that shit, bro. Like, I seen a lot of, you know what I mean, big ass marine dudes, toughest dudes that be, doing all this old wire rod shit, you know what I mean? Some of the hardest dudes break down when they get on there. And like, I certainly understand, like that was the career boat and having to touch that marine life that come through in those cages was by far like the hardest thing for me. Like, I like, forget, you know what I mean? The boat rocking and being out there and just being surrounded by water and everything that normally would scare people that they can't even do. Like, I'm not, I'm, climbing up there, it was the boat rocking, or I'm out in the ocean, the water. Like, I was not prepared for having to pick up that marine life. Like, yo, it was crazy. It was, it was so crazy. Um, I had like a little bunk rock that I slept on. Uh, it was, oh my God, man. It was, this is, it's definitely, you know, I'm definitely glad that I did it. I'm definitely glad that uh, I, I didn't quit. And if it wasn't for me having so much pride and me like, oh, no, I got to go back home and tell everybody, like, I didn't make it. Or I was like, well, no, nah, take me home or whatever like that. I just couldn't do it. I had way too much pride to do so. And I, I didn't falter. I didn't wave. I was just like, I just kept having talks to myself at my weakest moments. And at times, but I didn't think I had enough energy to continue. I, I pushed past that threshold and I found the energy to not only complete that task that was at hand, but to do more and go above like everybody else who was tired and was just like, yo, I'm going inside. Like, he, you know what I mean? Well, not everybody, because only me and my other dude pretty, pretty much doing most of all the work. But he was like, I'm going in, man, the rest, I'm going to warm up. I'm like, all right, you go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean up the deck and shake all these shells off and shit like that. You know what I mean? What she should have been helping with or whatever like that. But I was just like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I found like a lot of energy to go above and beyond what was expected of me because I felt like, you know what I mean? I had a lot to prove, you know what I mean? To to not only myself, but to the crew too. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm representing Newark, New Jersey. I'm representing Atlantic City. I'm representing my family. I'm representing the U.S. Army, uh, infantrymen in the U.S. Army. And I just couldn't, I couldn't be weak. I couldn't let them see any amount of weakness within me, even though I had multiple moments of it 
I, I, I dug deep down inside and, and pushed through. Um, there's a lot of things that I learned about the ocean and the, uh, the the marine environment and stuff like that. There's definitely a lot of things that I would say that needs to be changed about it. Uh, a lot of things that I've learned that, you know what I mean, you probably would never hear about uh, in an ordinary world. You know what I mean? Like the things, the, the damage that some of these vessels are doing to marine life and to the ocean floor and to coral reefs and things like that. Like, I mean, I've seen some pretty crazy things that, like I said, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't comment on too much because I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? I, that's not what I went there for. I didn't go there to try to ruin that industry or anything like that. I went there for the experience and for the personal challenge and to see if I could make it and, and really to see the stars and the moon rise on the ocean. But it happened to be a new moon. <laughs> so I didn't see the moon at all. And it was, the lights were so bright on the deck of the boat that I really got to see the stars that I would, besides the ones I would normally see if I was back on the, on shore. I got to see Orion, you know what I mean? Of course, you know, he's always beautiful. Shout out to Orion, Star Nebula, I mean, to the Orion Constellation. Uh, I got to, you know what I mean, witness, you know what I mean, a, a sunrise, whatever like that, but the, the, the real, the, you know what I mean, that was one of the things I essentially wanted to go in there for, was like to, to do some real good stargazing and, and, and see the sunrise and the moonrise, but it was a, it was a new moon and Sometimes you're just so tired and so weak, you know what I mean? It's like hard to really take in all the beauty. Even though I did, you know what I mean, have a few times where I, I you know what I mean, I sucked it up and was like, yo, man, let me go outside. It was like, come inside, you know what I mean? Get some, get warm, get dry. And I'm just like, nah, you know what I mean? Just let me sit out here and let me just, you know, just get some fresh air and enjoy the view and everything. And I mean, I got to see uh, some, some big, like ocean freight ships, like with these like container ships and stuff like that out there i got to see all different types of different boats and ships and stuff like that um it was a really it was a real real really uh crazy experience and like i said uh like i really had to dig down and and find like fortitude in my life to i mean fortitude within myself to complete the task of touching those stargazer fish the other fish that i had no clue what it was and stingrays and horseshoe crabs. And it's not like you gotta pick up one or two of them. Like, I mean, throughout the, the duration of the time I was on that boat, I probably picked up like uh, close to a hundred of each different species that I named. I mean, it, it was, it was, that was the most terrifying part about it all. Like, everything else was like null and void when it came to that. Like, everything else was, it didn't even matter. Me having to touch and pick up stingrays was crazy. Like, I, I don't know how I mustered up the, the courage to do so. That was the most challenging thing I ever done in my life. And I'm probably literally going to have nightmares from looking at those things forever. Like, I don't even have like PTSD or like bad things about things I've seen in war and on the streets and shit like that. But I am certain that I will have nightmares for years to come from the look of the faces of some of this marine life that I have seen. And like where every time I close my eyes, literally, like I see the eyes and the faces of some of the marine life that I've seen out in the ocean and it like completely scarred me. Like when I say petrified, like turned into stone, like it turned me into stone some of them where I was just like, I mean, I was, I was screaming like a bitch on the inside. Like, trust me, like, I, those dudes like, oh, this dude tough, you mean bitch? Man, let me tell you something. On the inside, every time I had to pick up one of those fish, and I try to get rid of them as fast as possible, I just try to scoop it up, it'll fall out my hands, I had to pick it up again, and I'm just like, oh my God, like, this is, this is crazy. Like, it was, it was, it was, it was really, really nice, man. Um, what else can I say about it, though? Uh, yeah, man, the, the, the money's real good, but like I said, I don't know if some people will see that if you can even make it through, I'm telling you right now, most, most, once you got to get on there, you got to start climbing and dumping those holes and all that, the hoses and all that's like that. Most people won't even make it through that part. Like not even, even getting to the point to where you can even start digging for the clams. Like when you drop the dredges and all that stuff like that, like 
most people can't deal with the swaying of the boat, the weather, and then how wet it is. And trying to keep your balance while you're working hard, while the boat is moving all crazy and the waves and everything. Yo, two more state troopers. Yo, what is wrong with these people? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've never seen so many state troopers in my life. This is, it was, it was crazy, man. Um, thank you all for your support. I know a lot of you sent me your best wishes and everything and your blessings. Uh, thank you a lot. Um, some of you wanna know, is it something that I will continue to do? Uh, like I said before, it's something I will do maybe sparingly here and there, whatever like that. But it's, it's, it's not something that you can do every day unless like you really just dedicate your life to being a drug addict. Like you have to be, like you literally have to be on an insane amount of various illicit drugs in order to withstand being out there and doing that type of work and being able to, to, to stay awake through a long time. Like you're doing, the, the bare minimum you will do is about 48 to 52 hours of work in like, you know what I mean? In 48, 48, 50 hours, the whole time you're out there, you're working pretty much. Like, so I got to lay down and get some rest for maybe like four hours, whatever like that. And I like, I like I couldn't even sleep because it was just like, I was too, I, I kept seeing those damn fish in my eyes, every time I closed my eyes, it was just, it was just crazy. So I really didn't sleep at all. I, I could see like, you know what I mean? It getting better the next time I go out there. Like now I went out there the first time I knew like, all right, well, I didn't need this. I need that. This would make it better next time. But like I said, you know what I mean? Like I would have to really take like a bunch of Percocets and I don't really want to go down that road. Like I don't really, I'm really trying to stay away from any type of things like that. Like, I'm the Murphy just told me. How's it going, sir? Thank you, you as well. questions whatever like that just ask me man if you got any suggestions like what other job you want me to do next or try like i just i don't know if y'all know i didn't tell anybody but i i worked at a gas station for like six hours and see how that was i did some little fast food thing at this little like sub place where i had to make sub sandwiches to see how that was it was really cool it sucked too at the same time i never ever thought that i'd be doing something like that but i just did it for the experience and see how it was and just to get like a different perspective from the other side and all these different things that i've been doing lately have given me such a profound you know what i mean different aspect of life like you know what i mean like so many things i took for granted and so many things i looked down upon that i have like such a, a, a broader and different perspective on now and so much more respect for so many different people's crafts like Man, never look down on anybody's crowd or whatever it is that they do, man, because some of the things, you know what I mean, you may think that, oh, that's easy or whatever, but it, it, it's, it's not like as easy as it may look all the time. So I definitely learned to tip better. I definitely learned to be more patient with some people. Um, I definitely learned how to treat gas attendants better and, and you know what I mean, I always tip them, but I learned, you know what I mean, more so the value of tipping and how that really plays into how about they make their money. You know, being on the other side, you know what I'm saying? I've always been a good tip. I always try to, you know, defy the stereotypes of black people not tipping well, you know, not tipping well. But I couldn't, I had to stop doing the gas station thing because, you know, I was like wearing Gucci clothes and like wearing like, you know, I'm dressed like, I don't, I don't, I didn't really have any like regular clothes that made me look like a gas station attendant. So when I would go up to some of the cars, you know, I mean, some of these dudes was from the streets and they thinking I'm trying to rob them. Like, yo, bro, what the fuck you doing? What you doing in my car, bro? What's up with you doing? Are you crazy or something? Like, I'm like, nah, bro. I'm like, what you want? Like, you need some, what kind of gas you want? Like, man, you ain't no gas attendant. Let me wait for my car, bro, before I kill you. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm gonna get the gas, too. They're like, nah, bro, go get the, go get the Indian nigga, man, because this ain't, I know you ain't no gas attendant trying to take my bread. Like, this, you crazy or something? I'm like, nah, I'm gonna go into a couple little incidents, like, where the owner had to come, like, nah, man, he really doing it. Then some dude ran off and didn't pay for his gas, and 
he calling the police and then want me to give a statement to the police about what happened. I'm like, man, I'm not doing all that shit. And so the police sitting there trying to talk to me to find out what happened. And I'm right there on the main strip on the corner and all these cars riding past and my dumb ass sitting there looking at the police officer. Police officer talking. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm good, bro. I ain't the same. Uh, you know what I mean? It was good. I, I, I wasn't beat for that. You know what I mean? Um, but like I've done a lot of a couple different things. You got any suggestions or any things that you think I should try that's like really dangerous and fun and excruciating? Uh, or even not, like you know what I mean? Something this is like see how it was. I mean, I'm try I'll try it, you know what I mean? Only other thing I can think of that I might want to do next is just is just get back to some sort of combat zone and and, and fight. Like I it's nothing nothing that I've done since I've gotten out of since I've left combat, a theater of combat has ever been able to fulfill that void of being in combat, like nothing will ever, the adrenaline you get when bullets are flying past you and you're firing at the enemy, engaging the enemy, or jumping out of helicopters and shit in the middle of the night, do conducting combat raids, killing capture missions and stuff like that, like nothing will ever compare to that. And no matter how bad it sucks, even the bad parts about it, you know what I mean? And you see a lot of horrific things. You know what I mean? Like I said, I seen a lot of dead bodies, a lot of people, you know what I mean, getting blown up and, you know what I mean? And especially the children, you know what I mean? With their faces blown off and all kinds of crazy things that I've seen and hearing the children cry and everything like that. But it's just something about it that, you know what I mean? You know you're doing something greater and you're making a difference and you're, you're, you're a part of something that's bigger than yourself. You know what I mean? And it's not about you. And, and seeing like the fortitude of other Americans and the resolve of the American man and the American soldier is something you cannot put a price on. You know what I mean? Everybody from all different walks of life, whether black, white, green, pink, gay, straight, whatever, man, we all came together. Regardless of what our political views were, regardless of why we were there, you know what I mean? Like we, I, I, I've met some, some amazing and some of the bravest men that I don't care how you feel about the American government or this country, like you have to give these men their respect. Like some of the, the brave men, like this has removed me from the equation and everything that I've done. I mean, I've met some pretty whole badass dudes and it was a, the, I mean, some of the things that I've seen these dudes uh, was there, which is great. But it's been 40 minutes now to my trip. I didn't, I don't want to keep you guys any longer. Thank you for your love and your support. I love you all. Um, I'm pretty sure some things that I'm missing from the trip. Oh my God, it was so much, but like, like my mind is so overwhelmed with all the things that happened. Like, I mean, I couldn't wait to get back home and and get to sleep. And it's like, I miss my bed so much. Like everything I took for granted, like I, it, it really made me realize how blessed I am. And I really tackled, you know what I mean? A fear that I never even knew that I really had. We're picking up those women in life. Like I've never been scared of anything. I'm known for being fearless, but so it was it was really cool to, to really know that I could make it through that and conquer that fear. I love you.